Hi, I'm Sydney. And I'm Mackenzie. We are live at the Eamon Carter. Well, to start us off, we're going to talk about our first painting, which is actually right behind us here. Ooh, whoa. Is that a painting? Yes. Yes, yes it is. The artist says it's a painting. And we can argue that, too. Well, let's tell you why it's a painting. You see behind us here, we'll get a little bit closer. You can see that wood that is put together in a flat, very two-dimensional manner. And the shapes and texture is very 2D, like you said. Yes. Which lends itself to more of a painting than a sculpture that would be 3D and all the pieces would be used to create structure instead of line and value. So as you can see behind us here, this artist who was has a background in painting and considers himself a painter, uses the shapes of the wood um, and the values and the texture that it gives to create a New England landscape, yeah. number two. Yeah, and his name is? George Morrison. George Morrison. Thanks for a good show, George. Finger guns. Hi, this is a painting by Stuart Davis, and it's titled Egg Beater Number Two. He did several still lives like this. Um, you can't actually very easily tell that it's a still life, but it's a still life of a fan, a glove, and an egg beater. And I think it's really cool how abstract it is, even though he had reference material. I really like the um, heart edges he used, which relates to our first painting, and those strong contrasting colors and if you get really close up here you can see the texture of his paint in some areas i'll use my shadow in some areas is really thick and then some areas the texture is really thin i really like that about this painting i hope you learned something about stuart davis's egg beater number two so this is a painting done by georgia o'keefe um, it's actually inspired by Taos, New Mexico. Um, it became one of her very like prominent inspirations for many of her pieces. You can kind of see that like suggestion of the coloration through that like very natural whitish red color. Um, and this is actually the backside of a church in Taos, New Mexico. But she really likes to blur the lines between abstraction and nature and what's true and um, kind of exaggerate that. So you can't really tell what it is, um, but you know that it's some sort of landform. She also does a great job of blending like what was nature, like down here on the bottom of the landscape, and bringing together the man-made and the nature aspect of that in the painting. If you get closer, you're able to see that she uses very hard lines on the top part of her um, pieces, but then softer lines towards the center to create this really light, um, shadows um, and then those deep shadows back there as well so there's a lot of variety in the color um, even though it's a pretty limited color palette